Yeah, and, and when you think about the the intention or the intentionality behind shooting like that, and you ask that question, you know, why do underwater f- photos matter in the in the grand scheme of things? I also think if you zoom out and you think about like the story of Valley, Valerie Taylor, for example, I don't know if you saw a documentary uh, playing with sharks, but uh, it was great. Um, but a lot of these stories, you know, Valerie Taylor, Jacques Cousteau, obviously the most famous one, you know, the inventor of the Aqualung, all these things. Um, even Dr. Sylvia Earle at some level, a lot of these stories started with, you know, fishing. I was a underwater spear fisher. And then I started taking underwater photographs and video. And then I realized, oh, this video tells a story. And so I started telling that story. And then I realized the things that we do actually affect the underwater world. And it turned into some of the great conservationists of their time. And so when you think about like the percentage of people that are privileged enough to call themselves scuba divers and have been able to see what a coral reef looks like for themselves or what, <coughs> excuse me, what a spring or cenote looks like or what, you know, the wall in an ocean looks like or a wreck. Um, there, there aren't, a, a ma- it's not a mass, it's not like, you know, how many people have flown on an airplane at this point, it's, it's a lot. Uh, how many people have seen a coral reef with their own eyes under, under the water, you know, the, the number is limited. But then you say, how many people know what a coral reef is? And almost everybody would. And why? Because those photos bring it to life. Well, you know, what's what's happening in the ocean? What's happening over time in a dive site or in a particular environment? And so I think that, that photos matter in the grand scheme of things because they bring others into that world, into that environment, into that wild that otherwise either couldn't or won't ever be in that environment. And, and that has turned into a lot of conservation and, and, and activism. And that's, that's amazing. So there's something special too, about, I think about the separation between photographs and videography. Um, I don't know why, but videography feels more, um, at least this is how, how people would describe it to me when I was asking them about it was feels more that you're observing something you know, it's harder to put yourself in that environment. You're more observing what somebody else uh-huh. is doing versus a photograph for whatever reason, because it's still, because it's limited, because it's, you know, only the, the, the four you know, sides of that frame feels like you can put yourself in that scene easier. Like your imagination has an easier job putting yourself in it for some reason than it does with watching a video. And I found that kind of interesting and, and as I thought about it, true. So anyway, my, my point being that I think that underwater photography has a, has a huge role to play um, when it's used in that way to introduce people to what's happening under our water, um, what's happening in our waterways and, and leads to, I'm not saying all photographs lead to conservationism and, and activism, but that certainly has been a pathway for people. And, and that's, a, I think, a really, you know, kudos to photography and, and those that get really into it. To, to tell those stories and show, you know, even if it's your small group of friends that don't dive, what you see, it's a cool way to invite them into, into that environment that, that needs us to be conscious of um, our underwater, you know, health and underwater, um, you know, ways that we impact. No, I think that's very real. Yeah. There, even if it's in like such a small way of, you know, one or two of your friends seeing it. And, uh, I, I think a lot of that too, um, you know, the local Texas stuff, um, cause a lot of people don't realize that there's springs in the hill country that, that look like spring lake or, or uh, landed lake in new Braunfels. And, um, it, it's always interesting to me when you post a picture of one of those areas and people ask you where you went on vacation to go take that picture or something like that. And it's like, <laughs> right. well, that blue waters, you know, <laughs> right here, there's, there's springs all over the place in the, in the hill country. And a lot of people don't realize that. And, and I think that's another fascinating thing about the flower garden banks too. Cause a lot of people don't realize there's a coral reef <laughs> off the coast of Galveston, because the last thing, when you go and look at that chocolate milk water on the, the beach of Galveston, the last thing you expect to be, <laughs> Even if it is a hundred miles offshore, the, the last thing you'd expect to be out there is, is that. And uh, I've always found that kind of funny. 